Okay, go ahead. Okay, welcome to Architects of Change Live, where we have conversations with change makers every week who are moving humanity forward, who are thinking about what we need to know, how to change our lives. These are men and women who work in all areas of human endeavor, and today we're in the area of health, clarity, cleansing, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, which is exactly where I love to be. And we're here with somebody who is really getting people to think about how they live their lives, how what they eat, and who they keep their company with. And I'm really happy to meet him because I've heard a lot about him. We have uh, many mutual friends, and I've read his work, uh, Dr. Habib Sadegi. And this is his new book, which you can get uh, at Amazon. And it's 12 Steps to Finding Renewed Energy, Spiritual Fulfillment, and Emotional Healing. It is called The Clarity Cleanse. And uh, I love the simplicity hmm. uh, of this cover um, because it really is an empty cup that mm -hmm. we're all given and what mm -hmm. we put into it or take out of it is really up to us. So welcome to Architects of Change Live. And tell me, Doctor, how do you think you are moving humanity forward? Uh, well, thank you for that introduction. Mm -hmm. There is a part of me that wants to just thank you and say goodbye and leave because I <laughs> think you that. summarized. <laughs> I think you summarized everything. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I don't think it's just me. I think every human being, um, in our own way, um, by taking responsibility, we're really are working our own process and we're moving humanity forward. Perhaps um, in a humble manner, the way that I've started different conversation is to really share my story. Mm -hmm. The story of being a 26-year-old, second year medical school, and I was diagnosed with testicular cancer, and on the background was uh, Lance Armstrong, mm -hmm. um, which ended up losing part of his lungs, part of his brains, and, um, and as well as Scott Hamilton. I um, love the gold an architect medal. of change, great friend. Right, yep. right. And um, so it was scary, mm -hmm. you know, and at the time, um, I, I actually brought my report with me. Um, uh, you know, at the time, what was recommended for me, uh, g being diagnosed with testicular cancer, I was given 30% chance of survival. And what was recommended was basically to cut me open from my pubic bone all the way up into my chest bone, take out my entire gut, the lymph nodes, and then radiation and at least four cycles of chemotherapy. At the time, that seemed um, very aggressive, mm -hmm. and it just didn't feel right. So um, perhaps the conversation that inadvertently I started mm -hmm. was listening to my gut instead of cutting it out. And now I like what you just said there, which is a key word, inadvertently I started mm -hmm. this conversation because I'm a big believer. People say all the time, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my passion is. And I always try to advocate that it's right around you, yeah. that it's either in you, in your home, in your space. We always look out here, yeah. and it's really here. So you started listening to your gut, yeah. and then a whole new kind of medical focus came Open into up. light. Yeah, because I didn't have a Dr. Sadegi for me. Yes. So um, what, you know, hindsight being 2020, mm -hmm. all these inadvertent <laughs> steps that we take, not knowing exactly where it's going to take us and not knowing if it's really the right thing. Mm -hmm. And part of it is what I refer to as um, I3 pact. Um, the, the first I stands for uh, the interest, mm -hmm. being interested. Right. Obviously, second year medical school, I was interested in this realm, in this linguistic abstraction called medicine. And the second I stands for intentionality. I had an intention of um, wanting to be alive. Yeah. And the third I is what I refer to as an ideal scene. So I, I, you know, they said I would never have children, I would never father children, I, you know, I, there were 70% chance of metastasis. Mm -hmm. So I would see myself walking on the beach of Tahiti and, mm -hmm. and what it would feel like or the aroma you visualized. of completely right. visualize it and I would hold that as an ideal scene. So let me ask you, you said you didn't, there wasn't a Dr. Siddiqui for you. Yeah. So most people can't come to you, they can get this book, but if they have the intention to feel better, if they have the interest, if they can manifest 
but they can't get to you, what should they do? Because right. a lot of us have the intention and the interest and, you know, my hand's in the cookie jar. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. what can they do to have a clarity cleanse? And what do you mean by that title, clarity right. cleanse? Absolutely. Um, so, one of the things, and, and I think, um, for me, I usually stay with the KISS formula. I keep it simply simple. Mm -hmm. So we, t we covered the three I's, right. which is the yeah. interest, intentionality, I ideal scene, or just imagine. So I got, I'm you with know, imagine. you. I'm, now then, you're in I'm interested in the KISS. Yes. W what is that? Uh, right. And then <laughs> it's the, it, so it's I3 PACT, P-A-C-T. Okay. And the P stands for participate. Okay. So it's great that that you're interested you have the right intention that you can imagine it okay now you got to you got to participate right. so the, this old um, model that that human body it's like a car that you can just take it to a shop drop it off and in the afternoon go pick it up it's obsolete it doesn't work right so you know part of the process was for me to participate in my own healing ask right. a question if i didn't understand something find out, look it up. Okay, Takes so if you're listening to this, I like to break it down so we're, yeah. we're focused. You have the intention to feel better, look better, be better. If you have, if you're sick or you just want to be better, you have the interest, have a fantasy or an intention of where you see yourself, but to participate, right? Your health, your livelihood, all of your mind is in your control, right? Absolutely. And, and okay, what's the other part? So the ACT, the A stands for accept. Okay. A lot of people, um, they, they want to refuse it. And, mm -hmm. You know, they turn acceptance into againstness. Mm -hmm. And, and th usually that doesn't work. Right. So acceptance, acceptance of what is. Okay. I have, for me, uh, realized that that was the diagnosis. That is a, a, a particular um, challenge that I was working with. So okay. acceptance is the next factor. And then the C is for commitment. You know, if you want to do the work this way, you got to be committed. Okay. You know, you gotta, you gotta get up. You gotta do the work. You gotta do the, the things that I've outlined. Okay, but if I do this work, what's gonna happen to me? My God, that's that's a great question. <laughs> so I'm gonna say the T. The T is for trust. Okay. So we covered I three packed. Okay. So now they have a formula. Okay. In terms of how to get started. Okay. But what what so what is it? If you were to yeah. do this, what yes. is it that you get? Look, what let's do we say. Get? Yeah. What? So uh, he, well, then what you get is this. So if you want to make me the, if you want to make me a cup of tea. Okay. Let's say you say, Dr. Sadegi, I got the perfect tea from Mongolia. It comes out, the leaves come out once every century. So you have the, the perfect tea. You have the most alkaline water, the mm -hmm. right temperature. Mm -hmm. Unless we have a cup, we can't really brew the experience of the tea. But give me practically, okay? I'm practically. out there, I'm sitting at home, I've been working all day, the kids are screaming, I want to feel better. What are the 12 steps I'm going to have to do? Fantastic. The first thing is to get a cup. And the cup starts okay. with what I refer to as selfless, selfless selfishness, which is a way of caring for yourself. So you got a cup. Okay, now I'm looking at the cup. It's empty. It's empty. Okay, so now what do we do? So so you're taking care of the kids. You, you, let's yeah. say you're a single mom or, right. or you're not, and yeah. you're juggling 50,000 things, and you got... And I'm listening to you right now, right. and you're talking about an empty cup, and right. I'm going to go like, yeah. what do I do? What you do is you start with what is accessible. I always talk about starting with the low-hanging fruits that's available for you. Okay. So what would fill up your cup? Do you like to go dancing? Do you like to listen to a piece of music? Do you want to take off your shoes and just go out outside in your garden and and just ground yourself and go for a walk do you like gardening um, what is it that you're interested in do you want to go hiking um, you know believe it or not uh, it might not be uh, most people take it for granted they may not even expect it intimacy you know being physically intimate with someone mm -hmm. to whatever degree you feel comfortable whether it's touching or whether it's sexual intimacy and 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 so forth it's the quickest way we know that uh, being intimate releases oxytocin oxytocin it, which is a hormone and it's the greatest thing research after research has shown people with the highest oxytocin they have the lowest Alzheimer's they have the lowest autoimmune diseases they have the lowest cancer rate mm -hmm. 
And so I, after you fill up the cup and go have sex, then what do we do? Good. Okay, so the you're cup a is already mom, filled there's up. There's no sex. So, uh, okay, whatever. Well, so the cup has been <laughs> filled up by the imagining of all these things. But how is that making, how is that giving me a clarity cleanse? Um, so the next thing is a lot of people, they don't start with an empty cup. They start with, uh, with a lot of stuff that yes. what I refer to as misunderstanding or misinterpretation or misperceptions. For instance, they could be a single mother, they could have a significant amount of worry, but they could be still really pissed, really pissed, at and be carrying a lot of residual emotions from their previous relationships. So how do you write about, how do you get rid of residual emotions? And we all have them, right? Everyone, and we all have As you get older and stuff happens, so it's, mm -hmm. first of all, it's accepting that you do, mm -hmm. not beating yourself up that you have residual emotions. And you kind of advocate about how to, have emotional healing. How absolutely. do you do that? So I think that's so important. Absolutely. So a good place to start would be to take a survey. A lot of people, what they do is they wake up in the morning and first of all, they're awakened by their cell phone mm -hmm. because they use the cell phone as an alarm, okay, yeah. to wake up. Right. Look, that's a no-no. That's, that's, the, that's the quickest way to push yourself into depletion. The, if you could spend, and it's for nine ninety five, you can go to Radio Shack or your favorite Best Buy or your favorite electronic um, um, supply and you can get an alarm clock, a battery operated alarm clock. And if you were to start with that, you know, you look at research, people that they wake up with an uh, alarm clock, which is battery operated, uh, you know, and not their cell phone, on the average they save up to 90 minutes a day. And here's how. This is what you may not expect. Here's how. Most people, they, they awaken by their alarm clock on the cell phone. Mm -hmm. They pick it up, and then they got an array of texts. Yeah. On their way to the bathroom, they're checking their text messages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They get to the bathroom, then they're sitting, then it's Facebook, then it's Instagram, then it's the tweet, then it's the you know email. Look, by the time, first of all, they're, they, can't, they can't urinate, they can't defecate, now they're constipated, now they're really pissed, now they have completely set a new emotional tone for the remainder of their day. So you're really advocating kind of getting up, approaching your day. And being right? mindful. Being mindful. Uh, you also talk about kind of purging out emotional residue, right? Absolutely. Is that writing it out? Right. So uh, we know that the first person who actually did this, that, w that we've tracked it, it's Rumi, the poet Rumi. Right. Rumi is my, this office space is built on the out beyond right doing and wrong doing. There is a field. I will meet you there. Yeah, in, in actual translation, and Sherry would, uh, would correct me, the actual co uh, translation is we meet you there yes. when you translate it from Farsi. And the reason is this. I, I know, and we've had this discussion with Coleman Barks. Mm -hmm. um, see, this out beyond ideas of right doings and wrong doings, that by itself, it's so profound. Yeah. And here's, let me just, here's the simple thing. If human beings could look at that, mm -hmm. and instead of, you know, the regular light switch, I talk about it here, the regular light switch is 99 cents. You flip it up, turns on, you flip it down, it turns off. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a dimmer, Maria, that now, it's 11.95. It's a lot more expensive. And that's the consciousness that, that I'm advocating here. It's not that something is good, something is bad. It's how much of it do you want, mm -hmm. you see? And that's that by itself. So I went back to the poem that you talked about, that things are not about being good or bad. Right. It's, not, you know, it's not that way. That it's the context. In what context are you looking at it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you're going back to what you refer to as purged emotional writing. I refer to it as Pew 12. Just saying Pew 12, it, it but feels you like... But writing it down. Absolutely, because yes. what I have found empirically with patients is that th something happens in the kinetics of writing, okay, that you give yourself the dignity of experiencing your emotions and releasing it. Right. And I also work with fire. So I believe, uh, as you may know or you know, that there are four states of matter on Earth. There is solid, like ice, there's liquid, like water, mm -hmm. um, and then there's vapor, gas. But there's the fourth state is fire, and we're, that fourth state we refer to it as plasma. And isn't that interesting? That what's inside the blood, we also refer the liquid mm -hmm. portion, we yes. refer to it as plasma. So in the process of burning, so once you sit down and you burn, but what am I burning? 
Mm -hmm. Well, look, just check in. Start with the question. How am I feeling? What are my thoughts? What are my emotions? And if there's any residual stuff, you write it out. Now, this, this is And then what, burn it. And you burn it. Now, the, 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 what I refer to as the psycho-spiritual hygiene okay, of it is very important. It's very important that you don't write it on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. It's it, because I really believe that words have power. So mm -hmm. if you're really sitting there and you're just letting it out and then you're carrying it on your cell phone or on the computer, I, I know that it affects us, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So burning it, okay, or shredding it, or mm -hmm. flushing it. You can get toilet seat cover. You could do that. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, most human beings, what they don't have is they don't have the sanctity of a space right. that they could sit down and they could really share what's happening. Yes. There are people they have that- have the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so you write it down. You, you talk about how emotions beget disease. Absolutely. Right, so if somebody is at home struggling, whether it's the flu, whether it's an autoimmune disease, whether it's um, something that they can't even pinpoint, yes, um, you advocate for them to kind of, we've talked about all the things, setting their intention, looking at their cup, trying to think about what fulfills them, trying to get rid of whatever is keeping them, in your mind, stuck or sick, right, and then you really advocate quite a strict diet. Yes. Um, before we get to the diet, there's one more thing that I would like to bring forward. Right. And what I would like to bring forward is the context. If, if let's say, <clears throat> if you look at me, and see, if I'm, if I'm let's say, pressing, I, I don't want to do it. Let's say I'm someone is you sitting press, here. You didn't touch my okay. hand. I'm so not gonna someone is, <laughs> no, no, no. But see, it, let's say I, I, I keep pressing here, yes, and right. God forbid you have a little bit of strain here. Uh -huh. And okay. when I press, you say, ouch. Okay. So there's two ways you could look at this. You could look at me, you could say, Dr. Dr. Sudegi, you're an asshole. Look, you're, you're creating pain for me. Mm -hmm. That's one outlook. Right. Another outlook is you could say, oh, wow, when you press, there is th I'm experiencing discomfort. I wonder what this discomfort coming from. Now, that is the difference between night and day. When you look outside and when you project your anger and you're hurt, that's what we, re what I, what we refer to in, in you know, the um, psychoanalysis as projective identification. But when you take ownership of your experience and you come back in and to see what is it inside that what I'm doing, it's triggering you. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of the new cup. That's a new beginning of a way of looking at it where you, you, you're not blaming anybody and you're not a victim right. and you're looking at what's coming at you as a curriculum. You're here, we're all learning, and you're learning from it. Instead, And everybody is a teacher, so whatever kind of you know, button they're pressing, it's not always physical, it's an emotional button, yeah. it's a mental button, but it's about something that's deeper, deeper that always. we have forgotten, Right. that we have forgotten. So that requires also silence, meditation, time with yourself, thinking these things through. How important do you think uh, diet is in <coughs> kind of, and when we normally hear a cleanse, we hear of like, we think juices, no food, cleansing, but you're really talking much bigger, but diet's an important part of it. Yeah, uh, the diet has always been. Right. I mean, you look at, we, we, so for, look, if we can go back, uh, th there are a lot of these stuff, these, mm -hmm. uh, these are old, age old wisdoms. Right. You know, we had the confession boots. When you're looking at Catholicism, we, still have confession we have confession boots, yeah. right? We still, that you would go in. Those of us who are Catholic, yes. we still have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, yeah. And, and, you know, and I actually talk about it here. Yeah. And I'm, a, you know, and I think that there, it's such an important, it plays such really an important don't role. Like, I don't really like those booths. Well, wait, it's yeah. not a matter of the booth. Yeah. It's the matter of the booth acts as a space where yeah, you can okay. you can really right you can really verbalize whatever it is that's this that that is that it's sitting you know heavy with you. Right. And right. that's what the Pew Twelve can do. But for let me us. tell let me because some people have mentioned uh, you to me before, and it really threw me off the sardine thing. On that the you day. advocate yeah. sardines and brown rice. So for somebody out there who does not like sardines yeah who does not 
like this? How can they have participate in this reju rejuvenation that you talk about without sardines? Yeah, look, it's grilled so, or otherwise. Yeah, so there are two ways of looking at it, right? Poached so, sardines, pan seared. Yeah, sardines. There, there's 18 recipes that you know that's coming out of Goop Kitchen and so forth, and there are so many, far. you know, and there are a lot of there various. There's eggplant parmesan. There's so many things. I mean, the options are there. Right. What I want to look at is this. What I want to look at is. It, wouldn't it be important for someone to take a look and to see why is it that I don't like sardines? No, I don't really want to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Not like I personally, so you don't like sardines? I personally don't. I have nothing about them. They haven't done anything to me, but yeah. I just, I really don't want to like get into a whole thing about why I don't like sardines. I okay. just don't like them. Y you just don't like them? I don't like them. Got I don't it. like the way they look. I don't like anything about them. But I, I'm interested in a clarity cleanse, but so uh, I so want a substitution. Got it. So w can I tell you a little bit about sardines? Just for you to have it, not that not. I don't want to. I don't want to subdue you into doing it or, or consuming it. But did you know that sardines? They have the highest yeah. uh, per ounce. They have the highest amount of B12. I know because we when we talk about food that's good for you for your cognitive health and sardine is on top. Sardine is on top because Just of like essential salmon, fatty I don't acid. Like and one of them. Yeah, it's a, you know, and acetylcysteine, <coughs> glutathione. I know. And I, know. I wish I things. liked them, but we're gonna have trouble with that one. Yeah. So I mean, you could. Repeat Place is there any is there any other fish that you care for? I like um, you know white fish, any kind of white fish. Great. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you oh, do good. that? Oh, okay. I didn't. That's why I was asking yeah. you. Yeah. No, you I was could. asking you if we could substitute sardines. But I can't make it too easy for you because there's a whole chapter on suffering and the importance You're of just, suffering. I got that down. Yeah. Anybody who's been <laughs> time in a Catholic school and confessional, we're way uh, we're way on the suffering front. We got that. <laughs> you got so a black belt. We, we got a black belt on the suffering, so I don't need to do that at all anymore. So, but I think your your goal really is, you know, to get people to think, not and to, to pay suffer, attention. not to suffer, but to think and yeah. work. So when you yeah. maybe another word for that is to struggle. Right? To struggle, and you know, it, it took me it took me six years, right? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Yes. I, I couldn't understand that. How could you? How could you be meek? How could you be shippish? Attribute that. Attribute it. Yeah. Who, I, who said that? Well, I mean, it's you know, it's uh, Christ Saint said. Well, Saint Francis, right? right. Sermon, Sermon on, on the, the Mount. Mount right? Yeah. Yes. And and what's fascinating? I mean, did did. Christ do a version of clarity cleanse when he fasted for 40 days, mm -hmm. when he was sitting in Jericho in that church, in that cave. Look, I've been in that cave, and the beauty of it is, and I didn't really understand this concept of blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, mm -hmm. until I was actually there. It's and the golden rule, right? R well, it's, it's, it's the point of liminality, because when you look at the cave, the initial opening of the cave, it's about four feet tall. You have to bow in. Once you go in, then there yeah. is an opening. It's sort of like you get born into an openness. Uh, you know, there's a new birth. And I feel like there are struggles, there are challenges. They, they come at us. And by participating, by being interested, by having an ideal scene, by having the intentionality, and we get to go through and give birth to a different way of being. And, and that's really the evolution of consciousness. And I think disease, plays an important role in the evolution of consciousness for all of us. So that, that kind of, that whatever disease or whatever sickness we may be experiencing, you're also advocating that that's an opportunity to have a different conversation with yourself. Look, if you're writing, if you're doing Pew 12, right? If you're writing every day for 12 minutes and, and you're saying, it. and burning it, and you notice that you keep saying, he is a pain in the ass and you have hemorrhoids, I mean, sooner or later, you're going to connect the dot that what you're saying is creating a physiological response. Give I mean, me another example of that. Well, she's a pain in the neck, and people come in with chronic neck pain. I can't stomach him, and they're wondering why they have acid reflux. Look, it's a t page t turner, and I say this from a place of humility. There are people, I mean, a young lady comes in at the age of 39 with tongue cancer that was diagnosed the last day that her divorce was finalized. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I, I understand that most people, they don't see it that way. They right. separate. They, they buy into the lie. And I'm here to tell you, it's a lie. This idea of dualism. The idea that the mind and the body, they're separate, mm -hmm. it's nonsense. Right, but we also want to make sure we don't think that somebody who has 
cancer that it's you've manifested it yourself oh, absolutely not so that you know that always check all these things with your doctor but what you're saying is that beyond that to try to connect the dots in your own life look, is there anything it's hard that you're manifesting yeah life no. is hard look right. it's you know we I, i've been through it i know what it's like you know life is hard we you know you you get up you got kids you got family you got finances you got obligations and no one we don't come in with a manual you go buy a little alarm clock that people are gonna buy it comes in with a little manual but we come into the world but no one teaches us how to process our thoughts feelings and emotions so you have so many kind of well-known people on the back, mainly actors and actresses, Anne Hathaway, Demi Moore, Tim Robbins, and they all talk about the clarity cleanse being a game changer mm -hmm. uh, in their lives. How long does it take to go on this cleanse? If somebody's listening to this and they want to make a commitment, they want to um, suffer or struggle, they want to do what you're advocating. They can start with one day. Okay. They could just do it with one day. And they could the modified version with the white fish. With the white okay? fish, yeah. They could do that. But the idea is not really the content. It's not what you eat. It's the mindset that you take with you into it. And the mindset is what I refer to as negative capability. A lot of people, they can't really, they haven't really developed to sit with the mystery of not knowing. Mm -hmm. So they want to know. They want certainty. And, and you know that 90% mm -hmm. of life, it's, it falls into the gray area. And no one really helps us to develop this. So you sit with your clients to help them um, be comfortable in the gray, be comfortable with the empty cup, yes. be comfortable. So really, even before you approach the cleanse, the diet part yes. of this, is to prepare your mind absolutely for what you want absolutely and how you think and how you think about others yes and the life you are actually living yeah and w if i may yeah. you have such an incredible voice and if you could and i think your viewers would benefit from this if you could just there is this poem here the law of life if you could just read it to them okay. i think they will benefit from it the law of life, love begets love, love creates life, life cultivates suffering, suffering whispers fear, fear accompanies courage, courage carries confidence, confidence whispers hope, hope gives life, life invites love, and love begets love. This should be called Love Begets Love. The, you mean the title? Yeah. Great. We all change it in the okay, imprint, great. the new print. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you so much. Uh, I think you, when I, I asked you originally how you feel you're moving humanity forward, I think in a nutshell, you're asking us to have a different conversation with ourselves. Yeah. You're asking us to think about how we're thinking mm -hmm. because those are our emotions, mm -hmm. right? And to do all of that before you even think about the diet. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And when you talk about what is your hope for people who buy your book and it take away from it? Yeah. Uh, people don't really need to buy the book because what, what they need to pull out of it, if they don't want to buy it, they already have, which is I3 packed. To have interest, to have the intention, the ideal scene, the imagination, to participate in their own healing and whatever challenge they're working with to accept it, to bring that acceptance forward, mm -hmm. and then to be committed, and then to trust life. Life is for us. And that trust factor is really, that's the sauce that makes everything workable. Why do you think so many well-known people um, come to you uh, to kind of get a different take on life? You what, know, what, what, do, what do people not know about people at that level? Yep, I, I'm not sure if I can if I can directly speak to that because I think it's a brilliant question. But what I would like to bring forward is that you know there are certain people like yourself mm -hmm. that they've gone through a level of suffering, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. that it changes them, right. that they've been in the crucible. Right. You know? Let's hope it changes you. Right. <laughs> so that and others notice. Right. Look, going being at the age of 26 and being told that you'll never father children, that you're going to die, you have 30% chance of survival, it does something to you. 
Right. And it's sort of like it focuses your intention and y the energy within you. And there's some people that in, in, in working with, um, perhaps um, with me, they, they see that clarity and they find value in that. And then they can take those jewels, those wisdom, and that's really what I wanted to give back. And, and it all started because my brother, who was a renowned cardiologist, I couldn't help him. You know, he was 10 months younger than I, and, and he transitioned. He passed on because of uh, sequelae of Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. So it, in service of honoring him and in his memory, this was to really get these information out there and to start a different conversation and to teach people how to metabolize, how to break down their thoughts, feelings, and emotions, whether it's metabolism of shame, metabolism of guilt, whatever it is, this book can give you the formula so that you could start that conversation for yourself. That honest conversation. Mm -hmm. Finally, tell me one thing, good thing about sardines. Um, if, if there was one thing that I had to take with me in case of an emergency, it would be a can of sardines. No, but tell me why. I, you oh, it's tell it, um, me. One of the one things that you need that creates what we refer to and the l medical jargon for it is neuroplasticity, right, right, which right. as you know, um, you know, being involved with the Alzheimer's Project and so forth, it really allows you, it creates the functioning and the firing or, of the nerve cells. Nothing replaces it, nothing. And I've looked at, look, I, I did the diet for eight months and I looked at my blood work every two weeks. I didn't eat anything other than sardines, brown rice, and apple for eight months. And I have docu, you need to understand, four physicians had to go through the manuscript before the publisher published this. This is revolutionary. You're talking about what conversation I'm contributing, it's here. It's funny, Rumi, since you love Rumi, Rumi has a poem, uh, and this is translation by Coleman. It says, you want eloquence, it's happening here. I always thought it was cute. Yeah. So you want proof that this works, it's sitting in front of you. <laughs> you know, and I have the medical records from City of Hope you know, to prove it and to back it up. Amen, okay. <laughs> He says you don't have to buy the book, but he did write the book, and as you just said, a lot of people vetted it, uh, so you should buy the book. The Clarity Cleanse, 12 Steps to Finding Renewed Energy, Spiritual Fulfillment, and Emotional Healing. And I like that it doesn't start with just giving you a diet plan, but it actually asks you to uh, check in with yourself, uh, check in with your intention, check in with your body and its connection to your mind, and move out from there. So thank you for coming to the open field. Uh, you can find out more views uh, from individuals like Dr. Uh, Sadegi in the Sunday paper, which I hope you'll sign up for. And once again, thank you very much for using your voice to move us forward. It's such a privilege. Thank you for hosting us, and thank you for having me. Amen. Thank you. Thanks a lot.